I give the floor to the representative of uh, Russia. Um, Vasily, you have the you have the floor, and I turn on out uh, again for us the hourglass. Thank, Thank you, Mr. President. You can turn your hourglass uh, on and and uh, take basically uh, uh, move it as long as, as as many times as you wish. But I will take as much time as I need to, Mr. President. We are surprised and at the same time not surprised by having the Security Council convene in emergency session with the participation of the Vice President of the United States, which of course we're all always happy to see him in this room. It's just unfortunately that he didn't want to listen to the other members of the Council about what they think about the situation in Venezuela. Today, we are witnessing yet another, another episode of a tragedy with several acts in the attempt to change the regime in Venezuela. The situation in Venezuela does not represent a threat to international peace and security. However, the external players are a direct threat to the peace and, and security of Venezuela itself and we just heard that today today we've just heard a horrific description of the, the suffering of the Venezuelan people under the yoke of an illegitimate dictator and uh, the only way to ease those sufferings is through decisive action by the international community obviously led by the United States well I'd like to ask where have you got did you get these figures and testimonies that we heard about today when was the last time anyone who spoke today actually visited Venezuela it turns out that you're examining the situation from a distance based on the premise that uh, President Guaido is the only legitimate authority in the country and a source of information about what is taking place there. And by the way, I want to say to Madam Page, who, uh, who told us about a, a very difficult situation with health care in Venezuela, and in particular, she spoke uh, of uh, the measles epidemic. I have to say that, unfortunately, this epidemic is taking place. Madam Page, do you know that uh, the authorities of New York have uh, uh, declared a, an emergency situation due to a measles epidemic that uh, has been occurring in New York? a few uh, hundred meters uh, from this building in Brooklyn. We have already seen all this in other regions uh, uh, in the world from uh, uh, so-called witnesses who have settled in the West and they told uh, of blood-curdling stories about the sufferings of the nations of Iraq, Libya, and Syria. And it is precisely as a result of Western intervention in those countries that the true suffering began there and that continues to this day. Do you want to see the same thing in Venezuela? Uh, just as the uh, legitimate authorities in Caracas, we do not deny that the humanitarian situation in this country is far from ideal. We are ready to work with them to improve this situation. We are guided in this by the provisions of uh, General Assembly Resolution 46-182, which envisions inter alia the requirement uh, of a request by the legitimate authority for a uh, providing to that government humanitarian assistance. And the Secretary of the UN should contribute to that. However, the report of OCHA has uh, uh, led to a, a dual impression uh, in our minds. On the one hand, it uh, stresses the need uh, of separating the political and humanitarian tasks in providing assistance to Venezuela. Of course, we are in favor of a neutral and impartial character of humanitarian assistance. However, on the other hand, we're disappointed that the information that has been collected and published today has not received the in uh, was done without the endorsement of the government of Venezuela. So it turns out that we're returning to the not very glorious past when OCHA used unverified information in publishing its reports. We would like to hope that that is not the case. Furthermore, a preparation of needs assessment is a part and parcel of preparation of a humanitarian plan of assistance, which in turn can only be done with the agreement of the legitimate authorities. Not complying with this principle undermines a key uh, aspect of Resolution 46-182. Mr. President, 
we categorically reject the methods of the United States uh, uh, with regard to Venezuela. With the one hand, you're grabbing Venezuela by the throat by introducing uh, still new sanctions and restrictions which prevent the country from developing normally. At the same time, international assistance that is required by states should be aimed at creating a situation where a state can uh, take care of its own citizens. However, with the other hand, you are also uh, picking the pockets of Venezuelans. You're shamelessly expropriating Venezuelan assets in Western banks. Just from the beginning of this year, you have taken some $30 billion from the country, claiming that only uh, the self proclaimed President Guaino can uh, uh, use those funds. The overall damage from the actions of the United States to the Venezuelan economy since 2013 can, can be calculated in hundreds of billions of dollars. At the same time, you call, you call on urgent assistance to the Venezuelan people. And I'd like to just recall that in the United States, not everything is very smooth with humanitarian assistance uh, uh, per se. Uh, you still haven't overcome the consequences of the devastating Hurricane Maria, which devastated Puerto Rico in the fall of 2017. At the time, there were serious problems with the lack of water, food, uh, electricity, medical assistance. Uh, some 225,000 people uh, were homeless. Uh, the whole harvest of vital crops was lost. The overall damage at the time, according to various estimates, was from 45 to 90 billion U.S. dollars. At the time, Washington completely rejected international assistance. In September of 2017, President Maduro stated the re readiness of Venezuela to immediately launch a program of support and solidarity to Puerto Rico to overcome the consequences of uh, Maria uh, in Puerto Rico was also... Uh, there were proposals from Cuba. This was also rejected by Washington. As a result, Venezuela did provide assistance to Puerto Rico through CITGO, a subsidiary of PDVSA in the United States, while the Cuban government res respected the rejection of the American people's refusal, did not insist and did not use this for propaganda purposes, even though many were unhappy with this decision in the United States. Caracas is not rejecting humanitarian assistance pro, uh, that is provided uh, based on the principles approved by the United Nations. Russia and other countries have provided such assistance in, in the framework of the WHO. Now, what's preventing the end of the crisis in Venezuela are the sanctions and in internal, uh, external interference in the internal affairs of the state. As for internal political differences, we are convinced that only a dialogue within Venezuela itself can overcome those differences. The United States has insistently destabilized the situation in Venezuela. They have artificially provoked a crisis in this country in order to uh, uh, overthrow a, a legitimately elected leader and replace him with his, their own pawn. Examples of the blatant interference of the United States in the affairs of Latin America and the overthrow with the use of military force of leaders that they didn't like. There are many, many such examples. I would like to once again address the uh, neighbors of Venezuela. Haven't you learned anything from history? Don't you understand that Venezuela is merely a bargaining chip in the geopolitical and geostrategic uh, struggle for influence in the region and the world? Very much in the spirit of a revitalized Monroe Doctrine. And by the way, the attitude of the Latin American countries to what is taking place in Venezuela are not, in, are not as uniform and unequivocal as we've heard heard uh, today from uh, the Vice President. It's very strange to once again uh, discuss what should be uh, self-evident truths. That is the uh, solving the uh, provoked crisis in Venezuela can only be through, through internal Venezuelan dialogue. And uh, the self-proclaimed president is not ready to this because he didn't get instructions to that effect. But there is no other way forward. In this context, we welcome international initiatives of helping to uh, uh, foster dialogue between the legitimate government and leaders of the opposition. Uh, such initiatives have come from the Latin American region, and in particular, uh, the uh, proposal from Mexico and Uruguay as part of the Montevideo mechanism is very promising. It uh, provides for a comprehensive and all-inclusive dialogue, and from this point of view, it has much more chance of success than those initiatives that uh, uh, demand uh, uh, preliminary conditions to even uh, 
uh, be launched. The possibility of joining the good offices or mediation efforts should be open to everyone who are trying to make a con constructive contribution to establishing an inclusive dialogue within Venezuela. And what is taking place in the Security Council today, unfortunately, is, is merely another episode of a frontal attack against the, the, Carac the government in Caracas and ordinary Venezuelans. I'd like to recall that in a parallel with the uh, attempts to impose humanitarian assistance, the so-called well-wishers are actively trying to challenge the credentials of the official Venezuelan delegation at various international platforms. We heard this today from the vice president. I'm not going to comment the tone of this of his statement, but I want to uh, say to the uh, that the permanent representative of Venezuela in this room was appointed by the legitimate government of this country, and it was confirmed by the General Assembly of the United Nations. Furthermore, these friends of Venezuela are, are so-called friends are replacing the official ambassadors of Venezuela, abetting the seizure of, dem of diplomatic property. In this way, they are what we're seeing is a blatant violation of the founding principles of the UN, the violation of the norms of international law. Perhaps uh, to actively, uh, in, in, perhaps the international rule-based order uh, that is so promoted, actively promoted by Western colleagues, provides for such a lawless, thuggish. Uh, violation of international law, but we certainly, international law does not. We call on the United States to once again recognize that the Venezuelan people and other peoples have the right to determine their own future. If you want to make America great again, and we're all sincerely interested in seeing that, stop interfering in the affairs of other states. You will only gain respect from that. You don't like when others interfere in your affairs. No one likes that. Thank you.